Okay, now I want to review a book called The Elements of Positional Evaluation, subtitled How the Pieces Get Their Power by Dan Heisman. He writes a article called The Novice Nook on ChessCafe.com. And his book um, is a fresh look at um, how to evaluate a position. And he starts off by uh, sort of reinventing everything, saying how should we what are, what are the elements we should use to evaluate a chess position? And he doesn't go with the, the old thing of like material and things like that. He actually brings up some, uh, some new good ideas uh, in his book. Uh, I found the ideas uh, quite intriguing. Uh, I would say the one uh, minor point I wish uh, uh, Dan would have done is uh, provided some more examples of his ideas so I could maybe better understand them. So, but uh, I just want to cover what what these elements are. Um, that way you can uh, compare them to other methods of evaluating a position. Here, let me scroll down. So his book was released in uh, 2010. Uh, I think it might have been March or April. I've been reading it for about the last two months, slowly. Um, and here are his uh, seven factors that he lists. He lists a mobility, and he goes into explain what he means by each one of these, so it may not be what you uh, immediately think of. And I'll try to cover these with my remaining time. Flexibility, vulnerability, central control, which is uh, basically like you would understand central control. Um, peace coordination, I'd say that's roughly the same as uh, maybe in other books or other people, at time, and speed. So here, let me cover what he means by each one of these briefly. Okay, I've set up a position on the board and I want to explain number one of uh, Heisman's seven elements, mobility. And it's basically the number of squares a piece can move to, that seems maybe a natural definition, but then he actually has four definitions, and I've included three of them here. Um, one is uh, he he defines potential mobility as a number of squares uh, a piece can move to if the board was empty. So if you just had a like uh, the white like a bishop on white or black, it would be exactly um, 32 squares, so half the board. Um, if you had a knight, technically the uh, potential mobility would be all 64 squares because the knight could eventually get to all the squares of the board. So um, that's the potential. The actual mobility is the number of legal squares in, in a position. So how many legal moves does it have? So here, like um, the... Uh, um, the white bishop on g2 can move only to these three legal squares where the uh, blacks uh, bishop on uh, d2 can move to all these squares. These would be the legal moves. So, and then the next definition is the actual global um, mobility. And that's a number of legal squares if given unlimited tempi, meaning just sort of look at the position and say how many, if, if, you, if the piece were free to move given, you know, and the other person had the pass, then uh, actually white remains the same. It only has these, but um, black would have the legal moves and then would have all these other squares, all the other black squares. And this one too. So, as we can see, Black's Bishop has a much greater actual global mo mobility. So, um, and the reason uh, Dan gets into this is that you can actually, with these seven factors, you can start figuring out what is the value of the piece. Just by looking at it, you can see that. Uh, the uh, bishop here on g2 is not a, as much great as great worth as the bishop here on d2. One of the factors is because it has a much higher mobility. So what is the next factor? 
I've panned up because I'm going to quickly run out of time for this video, but flexibility, and this means uh, maintaining many alternatives includes pieces and groups of pieces. Basically, it's like including a flexibility in your plan, just not getting it locked into one set of moves, or if you only have a couple of moves or one set um, plan, then you have a very uh, limited flexibility in the, in the amount of moves that you can play or that your pieces can play. Sometimes you see this as maybe a piece is tied down to the defense of something. The piece loses a lot of its flexibility in moving. So the piece actually becomes of less worth. So let's look at the next um, item. Okay, next Stan talks about vulnerability, meaning it's um, being a uh, being subject to attack, and he's talking about pieces or squares, so he's talking um, maybe if you have a centralized queen, um, while that uh, gives the queen the highest amount of mobility, which we covered, it also increases the queen's vulnerability, um, assuming no black or other opponent's pieces attacking it, um, because in the center, they, that's the or that's the most mobile area of the board, so um, sometimes a piece, piece's vulnerability, vulnerability increases in the center of the board. And also, um, he uses this to talk about uh, the reason why a backwards pawn is, is not as good is because it's uh, vulnerable to attack and to your opponent winning it. And uh, under vulnerability also comes to the concept of what we call outposts, meaning um, uh, you have a, if you have an outpost in your enemy territory, that square has a very low vulnerability to you. So that's where he covers that type of information. The next item is central control, which I think a lot of you may be familiar with. It's a control of D4, D5, E4, uh, E4 and E5. I'm not going to cover that in any more detail. But just to say once again, uh, if you read his book, you'll see that the pieces gain their maximum amount of mobility in the center. And if you control the center, then your opponent usually has to attack you on the flank, which takes you longer. So, piece coordination. So, pieces are placed uh, to complement each other, and it basically makes the whole is more than the sum of the parts. So, having your pieces work together is very important. If each piece is working independently, doing something that's not as strong as the pieces working in a coordinated um, fashion to attack the king. And he talks about how this is one of the differences between um, lower rated players and uh, higher rated players is that the um, higher rated players will usually initially set up their pieces to be well coordinated where a lower rated player may just get the pieces out and place them on what they think is good squares and then have to move them again to, to attack. A time, just basically, um, you know, you have to, chess is a turn-based game, I move, you move, etc. And if you spend uh, three moves, which you can, or spend, if you spend three moves doing what it would take to accomplish one, you've wasted two moves. So time is an important element. And the last one is speed. And here he's actually talking about uh, the distance a piece can move per move. So, like the... Uh, the knight and the king and the pawns are maybe what you call low speed because they only have a limited range. And uh, he calls the queen, the bishop, and the rook the fast pieces. And he's saying that um, as if, if a position opens up or you have an open position, then the fast and the fast pieces become more valuable than in a closed position, where the slower pieces like the knight will become more valuable. Okay, so I've scrolled back to, uh, so that's it. I've really run out of time. I may spend a couple more lectures or future lectures trying to cover these in more detail of what Heisman meant, but uh, these were Heisman's seven elements, mobility, flexibility, vulnerability, central control, peace coordination, time, and speed. I do encourage everyone to, uh, to, to read the book. It's a, I would say that, and, um, and um, uh, well, and his book and the amateur's mind by Silman are excellent books. I'd probably read Silman's book 
and get familiar with those basic concepts of the imbalances and moving, maybe move on the Heisman's uh, book to maybe understand some uh, fundamental concepts.